and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee.
scripture from the Old Testament will be coming from Psalm 39, verse 4. Psalm 39, verse 4. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my day. What it is that I may know how frail I am. Amen. New Testament. will come from Revelation, 7th chapter, 17th verse. And God shall wipe away all tears from my eyes. I've just read Revelation 7, 17. May the Lord add a blessing to the edification of his word. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we come this morning in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, celebrate the life of our own sister, Mary Stone. Yes. A life, Lord, that you blessed her so richly, that you blessed her with one of the most kind and humble spirits that a person could ever be. Yes, yes. Lord, you blessed her to be a giving person, a loving person, a person who gave without form or fashion and not for no outside show to the world. Yes. Lord, she did what you asked her to do. You blessed her to be a wife, yes. a mother, a grandmother, a sister, mm. an auntie. You blessed her with many friends. But Father, we are so thankful that you blessed her to be a part yes. of the Pilgrim Baptist Church family. Yes, yes. Lord, we just want to say thank you for this opportunity to yes. share in her homegoing service. Oh, yes. Lord, you set this day aside a long time ago. Yes, yes. Because Lord, you know all of our coming in and all of our going out. Oh, yes. But we ask right now, in the name of Jesus, name. that you would just touch this family. That you would allow your Holy Spirit to comfort them in the time of this bereavement. That you would let them know, Heavenly Father, that we've been made in due for a night, oh, yeah. but joy does come in the morning. Sure. And Lord, we just want to ask them when they get a little weak along the journey, yes. that you are so close that when they call your name, you will answer. Oh, yeah. Lord, we just ask that you would give them strength when they are weak yes. and build them up when they are torn down. Yes. And if they want to see her again, we ask right now, Lord, that they would accept you as their Lord and Savior. Oh, yes. We just pray, Father, for this family. We just pray for her friends. We just pray for this beautiful family. Oh, yes. Sister Stone, you ran the race. <laughs> you passed the baton. Now you can put on your long white robe mm. and tell your story. Amen. How you made it all. Yes. We say thank you, Father, for this beautiful life. Yes. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity just to say glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Because yes. you are worthy yes. to be praised. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amen.
knew for the song, but I got to know, I got to know Sister Stone, and he came closer to her when she helped me in the kitchen. That period, when I took over the kitchen, I went and I asked Sister Stone, would she help me? Because I knew she had retired from culinary, and she said, "I will assist you." <laughs> You tell me what you need me to do, and I will help you. And she taught me so many things. We had so many conversations, and she told me so how to do so many things and secrets that she shared with me, how to stretch the food when we thought we might have ran out, and how to make sure the pastor table was set the way it's supposed to be set. I will always remember her. I will always pray for her. And she will always be in my heart. On behalf of the Pilgrim Baptist Church family, just want y'all, the family to know that we love her dearly. And she meant so much to us. And God continues to be with y'all. Thank you. Amen. Um, I'm very stuck on that woman. She said about high for a lot of women. I was a struggle with girl, and I thought, you know, she never gave up on me. Whatever I need, she was always up. No one. This is the woman that stood by her body. And I'm telling you, her and God. But I know that on my dad, he was something else. <laughs> Her vows meant more than anything. Neither man nor woman could tell her no difference. But she had a commitment to God. You know, um, she taught me so much. You know, you know, I remember there was times when she would lend people money and they won't pay her back all the time and stuff. And we'd be like, oh, they're going to do it. You should do this. She'd just say, far as baby, check this out. She want to hit the lotto. They come at me for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, it, but it, it showed me how spiritual she truly was. Yeah. You know, we could talk a lot of things. But, you know, but like she always tell me, you know, you can say a lot, but what you do it makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. It. You know, she said about how, you know, when you got stepkids, right? And she is them better than the father. Just like your mother. I don't to my mother, she was. You know, um, I just love her so much, you know. Um, things I see her go through and the struggles and cancer and everything, man. She still was stuff. She still was happy. She still was, you know, I'm gonna be okay. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, a couple of months back, she said, Well, I'm ready. You know, I live my life. You know, time to baby, you, you gotta keep doing what you do. Keep doing what you do, stay on your path. Um, and the day that would keep me, it keeps me grounded, you know. I don't know, I got all the drugs in the past, you know. You know, but it was her strength to help me get through. She said, she said well, I was always saying, you know what I'm saying? He said, yes, I do. I went through the same thing with them cigarettes. You know. I had to start out and I got to say, well, you know, my brother was there with her in her last moments, right? The nurse said one thing to him. And he said, you know, my mama crying. And I was like, wow. She said, she's, the last thing she gets to see is her first moment. You know, the last thing she gets to see is her first moment. Probably. 
Yeah. I had to get on him. I said, boy, you got to get them. Probably for the front. Trouble. You can have some good times. 
It's all about how you make it. It's all about what you do with your life. Don't live your life for nobody else. Live it for yourself. Always be there for your friends, your family, the people you like, the people you hate, but don't ever turn your back on nobody. No matter how bad it is, no matter how, no matter how bad it treat you, always be the best person. I've been trying to do it all my life. Me and my messed up attitude just ain't been doing. So, Mom, I'm gonna try to do better. I'm gonna try to do better. And I want to say thank you everybody for coming out. I really appreciate y'all showing up. Please keep it in your heart. Please keep it in your mind. And always keep it in your prayer. Amen. Amen. Please take a moment to reflect on a lifetime of love and memories as you read Miriam's to have had Sister Stone as a member. We honor her today as her spirit now rests peacefully with the ancestors. And I want to offer my personal gratitude for allowing me the honor of serving you in this capacity today. Although I no longer serve at Pilgrim, I know you could have chosen any pastor in the world. So this is not an opportunity that I take lightly. I first met Sister Stone in 2010 when I was assigned to Pilgrim Baptist Church as part of a seminary program. Marion was one of the first people that I met. For a long time, she would only briefly speak with me in passing. And I later learned that she was that way with pretty much everybody. She preferred to observe you from a distance before deciding if she really wanted to deal with you. But we bonded over, and you can look at me and tell this, we bonded over food. She was regularly working in the kitchen, and I was regularly getting in her way. Sometimes I would go down to the fellowship hall, and as soon as she saw me coming, she would say, uh-uh, don't come in my kitchen. What you want? She knew that I was usually coming to steal a piece of chicken or taste test something else on the menu. But after a while, she got to know me so well 
that she would have plates, yes, plural, yes, set aside for me at every function. The irony was that she would make all these plates of food. And then a few weeks later, she would see me and she would look at me and say, Rev, you eat a little too good these days, aren't you? I would always tease her that it was because of the plates that she made for me. And after I graduated seminary and left Pilgrim, whenever I came back to the church for any event, I was always happy to see Sister Stone in the kitchen. And as always, she would have a care package waiting for me. I'm truly going to miss her. This was an easy eulogy to write because Sister Stone practically wrote it herself by the way she lived her life. But it was difficult to write because there is so much remarkable information about Marion that it's hard to know what to include and what to leave out of my brief remarks. You see, it's not every day that I get to describe someone as great. But Marion earned the distinction great because of how she lived, because of how she loved, and because of how she leaned on God. First of all, Marion lived a life of greatness. I could attest to this in my personal interactions with her, but this was also evident in the conversations I've had with others leading up to today. Time and again, people would say of her, you couldn't have asked for a better mother. You couldn't have asked for a better mother-in-law. You couldn't have asked for a better friend. You couldn't have asked for a better church member. You all would be hard-pressed to find anyone who had something negative to say about Sister Stone. She lived her life on her own terms. She did what she wanted, when she wanted, and make no mistake about it, she did it how she wanted. One of her best friends of over 30 years told me that she was known as a human GPS because it didn't matter where she was. She could figure out how to get wherever she was trying to go without the use of technology. Mary believed that if you were going to do something, either do it right or don't do it at all. It didn't matter if she was in church, on her job, or in her personal life. She liked to have things just so. And she had no problem getting you straight if it was necessary with some of her witty words of wisdom. Yeah, yeah. When I was at Pilgrim, I had a very difficult time adjusting to one of the former pastors and his style of leading. We just never really quite got along. And I would often get so frustrated to the point that I would say, I'm not even coming back to the church. And Sister Stone would pull me aside and she would say to me, why are you letting him get next to you? He has to put his pants on one leg at a time just like you do. And it was little sayings like that that helped me the most in that program. And now, even as a pastor myself, Sister Stone recognized that we only get one shot at this life. She lived each day to the fullest, whether she was sick or well. And we would all do well to take a page out of Sister Stone's life on how to be great. Her greatness is a gift that came from God. She showed that gift every single day in the way that she lived and in the way that she loved other people. If love were a picture, it would be a picture of Marion Stone. Everyone described Marion as a person who would give you her very last if you needed it. She didn't have to know you to treat you with the love of God. But what set her apart is that she didn't judge folks the way that a lot of church folks do today. If she didn't like something about you, she might not fool with you, but she was never going to talk bad about you. Her love for her church was evident in the way that she stayed committed even through 
times of chaos. Yeah. And she would say, well, I might not have voted for him, but I'm not going to speak against him. I'm going to pray for him. Right. Her love for other people was so strong yeah. that you knew there was something special about her from the very first conversation. She was steadfast in the love she showed to her faith community. Wherever she was needed, she worked. And y'all, she did everything to the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. Sister Stone also loved her family in a way that could only come from God. It didn't matter if people had gone astray, as my grandmama would say. She continued to love her family members the same way that God loves each and every one of us. It didn't matter if she agreed with you or your lifestyle. If you needed help, she was going to find a way to help you. It didn't matter if you were strung out or addicted. She loved you just the same. She did not play, but she also loved her children and especially her grandchildren. She loved as hard as any mother or grandmother could do. As a matter of fact, she treated all of us like her children at the church. If she was fussing at LC about something in the kitchen at the church, everybody who walked in was going to get some of that fussing. But we knew it was because she loved us. She also loved her friends. One story that touched my heart was about a friend who needed to regularly go to dialysis appointments, 46 miles away, one way. This friend told me that Marion never once complained about taking her there and back. And get this, whenever the friend would try to give Marion some gas money, she would refuse it. 92 miles round trip, and she wouldn't take any gas money. Oh, no, ma'am, we, we would have to work out an arrangement or something. But Sister Stone wouldn't accept it because she believed that her service was an act of love. Jesus said, by this will all people know that you love me if you have love one for another. Mary, you embody that love. Amen. But of course, no sermon about Marion would be complete without mentioning the love she had for little man and lady, her dogs. <laughs> they might as well have been her children too because of the way that she cared for them and spoiled them rotten. Not only that, but one fun fact I didn't know was that Marion would often take in stray dogs. She would feed them and care for them until she could get them to the Humane Society. The same could not be said for cats. She did not fool with cats. But caring for dogs was another way that she demonstrated her love. But none of this love she shared for her church, her family, her friends, or her pets would be possible without Marion leaning on God. That's number three. When we are born, all of us has a deck of spiritual cards that we are dealt. Some people are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. It seems like nothing ever goes there wrong in their life. Then others are dealt a deck that has a mixture of good days and bad days. And other people have a deck that's filled with sickness. But you never really knew what deck Marion had been dealt because she always leaned and depended on Jesus. She loved and leaned and depended on God to get her through every day and every situation. She trusted that no matter what she went through, God was going to see her through. Uh -huh. Even when she got sick, she still tried taking care of other people. Amen. Even when she was too weak to do anything 
for herself. She never blamed or cursed God. She trusted God to give her the strength. Even if it was just the strength to rest. My granny used to say all the time, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. And I believe Marion lived and breathed that same idea. She knew that her condition was getting worse, but she never gave up her fight. She never gave up her hope because she recognized that either way, whether she lived down here or whether she lived in heaven, God is still in control. Her example is how we ought to live our life. Right. Leaning and depending yeah. on the Lord. Y'all, yeah. I'm closing now. But I was deeply moved when I learned that one of the last social media posts that she ever posted said, Those that we love live on as long as we speak their name. Right. They said that again. Right. Those that we love live on as long as we speak their name and a lot of people assume that she knew her situation was eventually going to get the best of her a lot of people assumed that this post was speaking about her name after she was gone and i do agree we should speak the name of Mary and Jackson Stone every chance we get. But I believe that Mary had a much deeper meaning behind that post because Mary had understood that there is a name that is above every name. Mary had understood that there is a name that carries more power than Mary's name ever could carry. Mary had understood that there is a name called Jesus. Mary had believed that there's power in the name of Jesus. So much so that she called on that name every chance she get. And I believe if Mary could speak to us today, she would say, yes, my name was good. And don't forget about me, family. Don't forget about me, pilgrim. But more than my name, don't forget to call on the name of Jesus. She would remind us that good days and bad days. Don't forget to call on the name of Jesus. She would say when you're sick and when you're well, don't forget to call on the name of Jesus. Mary would remind us of the hymn writer song. There is a name. I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Mary would say, oh how I love Jesus. Oh,
continue our celebration of life for Mother Marion Jackson Stone at Southview Cemetery. At this time, with the exception of the family, at this time, we'll turn it back over into the hands of the funeral director. She's free. Praise the Lord, she's free. She's no longer bound. No more chains holding her. Oh, Miss Mary, she's resting. Ain't that a real, real good thing? Praise the Lord.
tragedies of commonplace, all kind of diseases, people are sick in no way. Oh, yeah.